Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. I see that more people are still joining uh, the webinar, so I'm going to give them another minute um, so they won't miss anything. Okay, so thank you all very much for joining us today. So, uh, before we begin, just a bit of housekeeping. This webinar is being recorded. If you want to share it with any of your colleagues, we'll go ahead and send an email with the recording after today's session. And of course, if you have any question, please um, write it in the GoToWebinar panel in the question box, and we'll leave some time for Q&A after the session. You can always contact us on Twitter with the handle at Cardiolog. So a bit of agenda for today. First, we're going to have a short introduction of both companies, who we are and what we specialize in. After that, we are going to jump right into today's subject, how to boost adoption uh, in Office 365 with analytics. After the demonstration, we'll have some time for Q&A. So a brief introduction about Cardiolog Analytics. Um, we've been around for the past 14 years and we're based just outside of Boston. Over the last 14 years, we've been focused on web analytics designed for SharePoint and now Office 365. Our flagship solution is Cardiolog Analytics and it's built specifically for internal platforms, including all versions of SharePoint from 07 to 2019, as well as SharePoint Online and Office 365. So many of the companies that approach us are doing so because they are putting all their time and budget and effort into their different Office 365 platforms, sending wonderful goals, goals such as enhancing collaboration or increasing productivity, but they don't know if these goals are being achieved. We try to shed some light on these questions and to really help our customers to understand what is happening within our portals and how can they uh, increase the adoption. So we operate in three pillars. The first one is the monitor pillar. We monitor your environment and provide you with in-depth metrics and with actionable data. So not just numbers, but numbers and statistics that helps you to take action and improve your portals. After the numbers, we want to engage, we want to help you take action and to get the, the end user experience uh, to understand exactly what they're going through and through that, improve your platform. After having both the metrics and your end user's experiences, you now can really enhance your entire organization. So right now we're looking at a short diagram explaining exactly how Cardiolog works. So first, um, we monitor the data source, whether it's SharePoint, as you can see here, or Office 365, or maybe um, Teams or Yammer. We use our own unique JavaScript tracking mechanism to pull the data from the platform, and we store it in Microsoft Azure. After that, we are presenting all the different data, as we will see in a moment, with uh, Power BI. So now we're going to uh, move uh, to my colleague, Ji Meng, to give us a brief introduction of AlphaCom Technologies. Thank you, Omri. So, um, hi, my name is Ji Meng. So, yes, uh, uh, we, we are a 20-year-old uh, company specializing in business consulting and um, technology integration services for the IT, uh, enterprise IT solution sector. Um, for um, our fo focus for the past 15 years has been Microsoft 
And we have been a Microsoft partner with Go Competency for the past 13 years. So uh, we have uh, project managers who are P3O and Things2 uh, trained and certified, as well as um, technical consultants that are trained and certified in uh, Microsoft certification. So um, yeah, moving to the next slide. Um, sharing a bit more about our partnership with Microsoft. Um, our primary focus um, is content and co collaboration, which is the uh, SharePoint piece, as well as application development, where we develop custom applications for the enterprise on SharePoint, as well as uh, Microsoft Platform. We also do um, project and portfolio management, uh, cloud deployment, as well as uh, messaging and uh, server infrastructure on the Microsoft Platform. So that's about it um, as a short introduction about Alphocom. Um, let's go back to the demo. Okay, so thank you very much, uh, Jimeng, for the short introduction. So uh, without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and dive right into the uh, of today's demonstration. So right now we're looking at the first dashboard of Cardiolog Analytics presented with Power BI. We're looking at the usage overview, as you can see right here. Uh, at the bottom of the page, you can see many, many tabs. Each tab is a pre-built dashboard that all of our customers gets from day one. And each dashboard presents different metrics. On the left side of my page, we can see the portal tree filter or SharePoint's hierarchy. You can see right here that we are monitoring SharePoint Online and SharePoint 2013 at the same time. But this could have been um, any other type of SharePoint or Yammer or Teams. So here at the SharePoint's hierarchy, we can drill down all the way to the list level. And I can click really on any of the below. And I can see how the entire dashboard will shift to show me metrics specifically for the side page or list that I just clicked on. I can click on multiple um, pages. So this is a way to filter the data through the different pages or lists. But if I want to filter it through the different content, all I have to do is to click on one of the upper tabs of my page. So maybe I want to see the community site or specific document or folder. And again, I can click on multiple of them and it will filter by all of them together. Next, we're going to uh, look at a bit basic metrics. So right here in this table, we can see the uh, page title, the page URL, and we can see how many page views it has, last page view, average duration, number of users, and everything else that you see on your screen right now. So by default, I am showing the most viewed pages, but I can go the other way around and show you the least viewed pages, or in this case, as we can see, pages that are not being viewed at all. And now that we possess this knowledge of which pages are not being viewed, we can take action, maybe archive all the irrelevant pages, or maybe um, we will detect that there is a very important page like the new HR site that we just spent three months working on and no one is using it because it's new and they know, don't know about it. But now that we know that they don't use it, we can take action and surface it. Next, we're going to look under the adoption column right here. We can see how many users are using the different platforms through the departments. So again, I can click on any of the departments and the entire dashboard will shift to show me exactly what I'm looking for. But I can go ahead and take a look not only at the departments, but by the individuals, exactly who uses, it, who uses and who does not use SharePoint. So right here, I can see a list of people that don't use SharePoint at all. And now maybe we can offer them some personalized training So if we just saw different ways to filter the data, right now we're looking at a d another way. So not through the department, but through the office offices, whether you have offices in different countries or just multiple environment uh, offices right here in Malaysia, you can go ahead and maybe try a training session for a specific department uh, office. And after you see success, offer it to the entire company.
So many of, that, of our customers, when the end user is opening their platform, it opens a specific page automatically. So seeing many, many one page views is not that impressive. We want to see some in-depth metrics take a jump as we improve metrics such as page of, of page depth, length of visit, or general time on site. Next, we can take a look at the common navigation, so how people move from page to page within the portal. Right here, we can detect that there is a very popular site or page, but it takes five or six different steps to get to. That's a huge waste of time for our organization. But now that we know that it happens, we can take action. Maybe have a top 10 most popular pages on our home page. Save all of this time. Next, we can take a look at some external links. So many of our customers are subscribed to many resources that they think will benefit their employees. Now we can take a look at exactly which of these subscriptions are actually being uh, useful. So you see all of these uh, links that no one are, is clicking on. So now we can take action, maybe unsubscribe to them, save a lot of budget, or surface the important ones. Next is search. On the left side of my page, you can see the most searched terms. So if I'll click on benefits right here in this uh, term box, we can see that benefits has been searched for almost 1,300 times. So 1,300 times 60 seconds per search, that's a huge waste of time for our company. But the metric that actually worries me here is the metrics right in the middle of my, the top middle of my page, we can see that only about half of the people, people clicked on any of the results they got, which means that half of them had to go and waste even more time searching for the answer elsewhere. Next, we can take a look at the visitor's technology, exactly um, how many of them are using their computer or their mobile, exactly which operating system and which browser they're using. We can take a look at these slow pages. So maybe you have a new site owner and he's very excited about this role and he puts all these different resources and videos and links and uh, pictures and it takes two, three, even four seconds for the page to upload. That's a huge uh, waste of time and just um, a lot of time to wait in 2019. No one wants to wait now for a page to upload. So if we won't fix it, this will decrease um, the adoption and how many people are actually using the platform. But now that we know how much time it takes for each page to upload, we can take action to improve this. Next, we are going to jump right into Yammer. Take a look at um, the usage of Yammer through time. Exactly what are people doing in Yammer? Are there uh, contributors participating? Are there inactive? We can take a look at each group. And again, I can click on any of them and the entire dashboard uh, will shift to show me exactly the filter I'm looking for. And on the bottom right side of my page, we can see the information through the different departments. I can see um, what are people doing um, through the department. So maybe I want to offer specific training for a specific department. Next, we can take a look at the most influential users. So not through the departments, but actually each and every one within the company, are they using and what are they doing when they are using it? We can see here how many threads they are creating, how many replies, uh, shares, likes, etc. On the left side of my page, you can see that we can filter it through the department, office, job title, country, and anything that we would like to. Next, we can take a look at the most popular threads. So. What are people? What are the threads that people are most interested in, and what are they doing on these threads? How many people are replying, or liking, or sharing? So now we are going to move to Microsoft Teams.
So right here, we can see the teams themselves at the bottom of the page. We can see some basic metrics like number of members, how many channels each team has, uh, number of messages, replies, and everything else you see here. We can again filter it through the office, department, job title, anything you want. But we can go ahead and take a closer look. So not the overall look of all the teams, but right here we can filter and take a look at specific teams. On the bottom right side of my page, we can see the top threads within each team. And I again, I can filter it, choose um, this team, and I can see how the entire dashboard will change to show me the threads relevant for this team. But I want to take a look at even, even deeper. So not only by team, I want to take a look by each channel. So I can choose a team. And after that, I can choose a specific channel within the team to see exactly what is going on. We can also take a look at the most influential users. So obviously a big part of teams is how people are communicating with each other. So on the right bottom side of my page, we can see exactly that, how many people are interacting with each other, how many times, and through that, maybe assess, maybe I can detect that um, our marketing team are barely uh, talking with each other, maybe because they don't know or their manager didn't give them the right uh, introduction of the new platform. But now that we know it, we can actually take action. But I can look at all of this through a different angle. So through the top threads, not through the teams or channels, just the uh, top threads. Again, I can filter it to any team I'd like and to see what are people most interested in. So after having all the metrics and numbers, we want to help you to take action right now. And for that, we have Cardilog Engage. Cardilog Engage is a tool that allows us to create a campaign to achieve our goals. doesn't matter what they are, whether it's to promote a page, notify about a certain page, or just to have a survey asking people about um, their experience. So now I'll show you very quickly how this super user-friendly platform can help you create a campaign from scratch. So first we're going to choose the audience. Maybe it's everyone telling them about the deployment of teams that will happen next week. Or if I want to drive adoption, maybe it's a specific group, for example, marketing users. But maybe I don't want to approach everyone within marketing, but only the inactive users. So people who did not visit for more than 14 days, for example. Next, we are going to choose the channel. Maybe it's an end-up message, like a pop-up on their SharePoint page or a notification uh, on their Teams screen, or a full screen, or a header. Maybe when they're entering the home page of SharePoint, telling them to check out Teams. But for our example, people, uh, marketing users who do not use SharePoint, they won't see these pop-ups because, well, they don't use SharePoint. So maybe they'll get just a targeted text message or an email telling them to check it out with, with a link. So after that, we are going to text and design it in any way we'd like. We can write a title and an, a description, and we can ask them uh, a question, maybe to rate the new site or uh, a three button rating, thumbs up and down, or maybe just ask an open question, like how was your search? and through that receiving their full experience. But another way that you can use this tool is to reduce the amount of email you generally send because when you uh, come in in the morning and see that you have 100 um, emails in your inbox, you don't want to open another company email. So for example, we can use this for a company event. So we can ask people to RSVP. So we can write, you are invited, the description, and ask them to RSVP. And what is really great about this platform is that every campaign can be a multi-layered campaign. So for this example, everyone who clicked maybe will get another message in two days asking them to confirm. 
and everyone who clicked yes will get a text message a day before the event with the description and a reminder. Next, we are going to cho choose a trigger. Maybe it's scheduled Monday morning next week when uh, we officially deploy Teams, or maybe it's triggered by a certain action when they are scrolling down a certain page, or when they are uh, viewing a page, or when they are viewing a search result for more than 30 seconds. So now they are searching and they are looking through all the all the results for 30 seconds, and while they are failing to find something that suits them, a pop-ups appear asking them what went wrong. And now you can have the live response from them of what needs to be improved. So after having both the numbers and after engaging your employees, you now can um, really improve your entire portal and make sure that your organization is the most efficient it can be. And now we're going to go ahead and um, give the mic back to uh, Ji Meng. Okay, that's uh, thanks for the, uh, the uh, demo. So, okay, so let's talk about some uh, success story that we have uh, uh, with Cardiolog. So we had a customer in the financial industry uh, where we helped to deploy a new portal with new branding on SharePoint 2016. But uh, we also had to migrate and restructure content from their old SharePoint 2013 portal, which they had invested in uh, for the um, for a few years. So they have a fair, fair amount of content there. So the, this portal was actually managed by the uh, online marketing team. And uh, they wanted to get data on how SharePoint is being used. So unfortunately, SharePoint's out-of-the-box usage reports uh, really fall short of the kind of data that the marketing team wanted. So this is when uh, they asked us and we reached out and found Cardiolog. So we partnered with Intlog and um, implemented Cardiolog to provide the analytics that the marketing team wanted. So um, as you could see in the demo, um, basically Cardiolog um, uh, really work in the practical environment and help our customer um, improve their portal a lot with the analytics data. So they use the data better to better en uh, engage their users by targeting content to them as well as uh, surface important and popular content to the main pages in order to reduce clicks. Right? So. Um, uh, maybe just go to the next slide, just finish up. Yeah, so just to uh, finish up, so Alphacom basically we provide end-to-end um, -end services around SharePoint. So we do from architecture, planning and design to deployment and implementation. So we also provide SharePoint content migration and restructuring services. Um, we are currently working closely with Intalk to introduce and implement Cardiolog at more sites in the re in uh, this region, um, basically we operate uh, out of uh, Southeast Asia, um, uh, but we are uh, located in Malaysia, right? Um, so in terms of um, applications, we also uh, provide services to develop custom applications. Uh, so for SharePoint Server, we do uh, uh, develop customized components using uh, Microsoft.NET, which runs on SharePoint. Uh, for SharePoint Online, uh, we adopt uh, Microsoft Power App and Flow to build a custom application workflow uh, that and embed it in SharePoint. So finally, to sum up, so we um, provide SharePoint managed uh, support services as well, and we also can help you support uh, your cardinal implementation. So that's pretty much sums up our services and offerings as well as the uh, success story. So back to you, Amri. Okay, thank you very much, Jimeng, for that. Mm -hmm. So I see that we have uh, just a few minutes left, so we're going to go ahead and uh, take a look at some of the questions. So I see that Tom is asking, uh, can I create my own dashboard within Power BI? 
All right, Tom, thank you for your question. So the answer is yes. All the dashboard that you saw today are available uh, from day one, but the metrics are uh, always there and you can create any dashboard that you'd like very, very easily. So Rebecca is asking, where's the data being stored? So all of the data that is collected by Cardiolog Analytics is being stored on Microsoft Azure servers. But our product is also available on-premise if you would prefer to keep your data in-house. Okay, I see that Rachel is now, now asked, um, how do you set, set up Cardiolog SaaS? That's a really quick answer. You actually don't need any servers or database to set it up. All you need to do is a quick installation from um, of the add-on, actually, from the app source. And this is the same for Cardiolog Engage as well. Okay, so I see that this is all the time that we have today. So I uh, thank everyone uh, for coming to this webinar. Again, we will send a recording um, after the session. If you want to share it with your colleagues, you're welcome to send uh, any additional questions that you have uh, to us. And if you want to schedule a personal session or just a call of introduction, uh, you are welcome to reply to the email that you will get as well. So thank you very much, Jimeng, and um, have a great day, everyone.